Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make over some items and we're going to start with a, um, a painting that I found and I love the picture on it. It has a really cottage core feel, uh, but I'm not crazy about the frame. So I'm going to be making over the frame. I'm generally not a fan of the dark background like that, but I really like the black and I feel like um, putting that in the background will make some of the other items pop. And so um, I just decided that I wanted to make this one over. So uh, I'm gonna have to take this one off. I tried to get that, it's like a canvas, uh, stretched canvas put in the back of this frame and I tried to get it out and I was afraid I was going to damage it trying to get it out. So I'm going to have to just tape this one off very carefully. And then I gave this two coats of the color uh, fluff. I think that's the color I used here and that's a Dixie Belle color, but um, it's really just a, kind of a muted white. It doesn't have any yellow in it. I thought about buttercream here, but I'm going to be going over this with um, some uh, Van Dyke Brown Glaze. So the color really didn't matter that much, just uh, as long as I started with the really light color. And the white that I used here really went well with the white and the, the lighter colored flowers. So now I'm just taking a damp cloth and uh, heavily distressing this. I wanted it very heavily distressed. Um, so I did that and brought back some of that gold, uh, but then I decided that I wanted more dimension in the color and I wanted to go down to the wood in places also. So what I decided to do was get out my sander and just really heavily distress this. And I had to be careful because of uh, I didn't I had to avoid the painting itself. And then I took the color sea glass and just very carefully painted uh, the, the area in between, but I didn't paint it solid. I wanted it to uh, be very worn. And then I finished it off with some clear wax and uh, I was happy with the look that I got. Then I thrifted this metal basket and it was in this dark green and I'm going to paint it in the color sea glass and let that dry and then go over this with the Van Dyke Brown Glaze from Dixie Belle and uh, that will pull some of the paint off because I haven't yet sealed it at that point and then, uh, and then I'll finish this off with a clear matte spray. So that's all that I do to this basket. And then I made a hang tag uh, to put on it. So I'm going to make a two-layered hang tag for this one. And uh, for no particular reason, I'm just doing it for the look. And uh, my friend Myra sent me some hang tag uh, bases. Uh, the little, the small one there is one of those. And I'm just going to layer it onto this larger cardboard tag. And so I start out by inking up the edges with some um, antiquing ink. And uh, for those of you who don't know, this is an ink blending tool. And this is the Tim Holtz um, Antique Oxide Ink. So, and I think this is the color Vintage Linen, I think. And now uh, I have torn a little piece of uh, art out of a magazine. And this is just some flowers and um or not out of a magazine i think that came out of the ideals book and now i'm roughing up the edges of this uh hang tag since my edges on the on the cardboard are roughed up so i just rough those up with my scissors i just scrape the blade of the scissors uh, against it and then uh, and then i'm going to ink it up with my uh, antiquing ink and if you don't currently use this ink, uh, then you really should try it. It's not very expensive and it goes a long ways, um, but um, it really makes such a difference, I think, on the hang tags, especially if you like the vintage look. And I've just torn some book page, some, uh, 
some words from a book page and I took some blue eyeshadow and just kind of rubbed over that just a little bit to add a little bit more of that color and I'm just going to kind of randomly glue it and um, and then uh, connect these two hang tags together. Now I've had several people mention that they like the hang tags with the lace and buttons and things on them so uh, the hang tags I'm going to be making in today's video are going to have a lot of that. And this is just a little scrap of lace. I'm kind of roughing it up the best I can. And I always like to go uh, longer than the area that I'm putting it on because I like to really scrunch that up for texture. So although I'm, I'm uh, adding it to the short end here, I cut a long piece and then I just kind of squish that up after I put that glue on. It's really hard to go wrong on these hang tags since everything is just kind of random. And um, actually, the more random I feel like, the better it looks. So just kind of layer until you like the look that you're getting. So I just layer that flower over the book page. And then I'm going to do some stamping right there in that corner. And then I'll add some buttons to my lace area. And I think that's all that I do to this one. What made me decide to do the double hang tag like this is just because I like texture so much. And so uh, I feel like that just adds even more texture. The hang tags with the lace and the buttons are also my favorite. Uh, I just really like the shabby look of them. And I'm using uh, what I showed you there, the Stays On ink. And this is in Timber Brown because I just wanted uh, to soften the look just a little bit. I didn't want the harsh black on this. So once I get enough stamping done, and I think I stamp on the back of the large tag also, then I just punch my holes and take some lace ribbon and tie them together. And as you can see, this double layered hang tag just adds a lot of character. And I've only done a couple of these uh, so far, so, about, so I think I'm going to be uh, doing some more of these for sure. And now the next item that I'm going to be making over is, um, is a picture. And this is uh, what I think was called oatmeal glass. And at some point or another, I had started this. And I think the reason that I finished this, or didn't finish it rather, is because I used Slick Stick on it. So, um, in hindsight, I probably should have just taken my chances without the Slick Stick and just painted uh, the outside alone because... Uh, with this being clear to begin with, the inside would be the same color. You would be able to see that color from the inside. But because I painted the slick stick on from the inside, you could see that white. So I ended up having to paint part of the way down just uh, to that line below the first textured area. Uh, Again, I, I wish I had just started with the sea glass and not uh, did the slick stick. And then obviously I would just had to let, let it dry a lot longer to cure uh, so that it stayed on well. But I've already painted it with the slick stick, so I had no choice but to paint it part of the way down. I didn't want to paint it all the way down because if someone were to use this to put water in, uh, to put some flowers in, then um, I didn't want to paint that where the water would be. So if you decide to paint a clear picture, I would just take my chances without the slick stick and just paint just the color on. Then from the inside, because it's clear, it's going to be that same color and you won't have to put any paint on the inside. So, uh, learn from my mistakes. I wish I had learned from someone else's. But now I'm using the Van Dyke Brown Glaze on this because uh, I don't want this sharp sea glass. I like the look of the Van Dyke Brown over this color and it'll give it more of an aged look. 
So, and I like seeing all that dark down into the detail. So I have to rub really hard to get this, all the excess off because I don't want a lot hanging out in the area to where it just looks dirty. I want to uh, just accentuate that texture. So I just rub it really hard. And because this hasn't been sealed at this point, when I rub it really hard, it's gonna pull a little bit of that paint off and not much, since I did use the slick stick. So what I end up doing was um, taking some sandpaper and uh, purposely pulling some of that paint off because I like that distressed look. So as you can see, although generally it will really pull some off, uh, it, it didn't pull off nearly as much as I wanted it to. So um, I just, what, what I couldn't get off with the sandpaper even, I just took uh, something and scraped it. So uh, I just really like the look of that glass showing through. So, um, so I wanted to get some, as much distress on this as I could. Especially since I'm not going to be doing anything else to this vase except for adding a hang tag. And I know I've said it a lot, but, uh, you know, taking a kind of a plain item like this and adding a hang tag just adds so much to it. And um, something that maybe somebody wouldn't really even notice, they'll come a lot more likely noticing it with a hang tag. And this particular one, I even added some of my shabby roses on it. Now the next item that I'm gonna make over is another item that I had started at one point and uh, couldn't really decide where to go with it. So um, my first plan here was to paint this in the color fluff and, um, and then do some decoupaging over it. But as it turns out, um, the decoupage that I used was a, a scrapbook paper. So this wouldn't have shown through at all. I wouldn't have had to paint it at all. But I took some of that fluff that I had left on my brush and just kind of dry brushed it over the top of this detail. And then uh, I went over this with a clear uh, sealer where I added that chalk paint and it wasn't sealed. So this is the scrap paper, scrapbook paper that I decided on, and it has this vintage floral print. And I know that the frame here is green, uh, so this vintage floral print will bring it together because the flowers are blue with the greenery, and um, that will bring this all together, I think. So I just, um, just took my nails and made an impression to for the, um, where I needed to cut this, and I cut it out and glued it in with some Mod Podge. And then I took some of the lace from the Dollar Tree and trimmed out around the edges. Um, I feel like this lace from the Dollar Tree is one of their better values um, because I feel like there's quite a bit on there uh, for the price and um, because it's a thicker cloth ribbon, it works really well, I think, for trimming out and because it's so thin. So I really use a lot of this. And then once I get this trimmed out all around the edges, then I'm going to take a, da a damaged doily that I have and cut one of the circles out of it. And because the full circle won't fit on my frame or in my frame, then I'm cutting the scalloped edge off the outside of it. And, but I'm not gonna waste that because I'm gonna use that same edge that I cut off and use it to make a flower for the center. So I just glue this down and I start by gluing that very center so I can keep it centered and I need that to be glued down well also because of that flower being added to it. I don't want it to cause the doily to pull away from my, uh, from my frame in the center. So I, then I just glue around the edges and get it really snug around the edges. And then again, I'm going to take that scalloped edge that I cut off and use it to form a rose in the center. 
And if you've never made one that way, you should try it because it really makes a pretty rose and it's very simple. So what you do is you just start with one end of it and uh, you may or may not need to cut it down. This one actually worked out just perfectly, but I glued the outer edge with the scallop to edge obviously on the outside and I glued it in a circle leaving the inside open. Now you don't have to worry about that cut edge that's kind of rough in the center because it's all going to be hidden. You're going to fill all that in. So you start with the outer edge and then once you form that outer edge, then you're just going to start gluing in inward just a little bit at a time until you fill that whole circle up. And then that will be, uh, that will look like a rose and it makes a really pretty rose. And you can do this with most laces, uh, any of them that have that more scalloped edge. So I just kept gluing until I filled that whole center in. And as you can see, it comes together very easily. And then you just kind of fluff it up a little and you have your rows. And now I'm going to make a hang tag for this one. And it's going to be that same style of hang tag because all of these are going together in a vignette. And I thought since I used this paper on my frame, then I'm going to use just a little bit of it on my tag. So as you can see, just tiny scraps is all you need. And this is some of that book page that I used uh, with the eyeshadow. And as you can see, I'm just layering little bitty scraps. And I'm also layering some scraps of lace. So just because you have just a tiny scrap of something doesn't mean that you need to throw it out because it just takes very tiny scraps for these hang tags. As you can see, I usually don't lay my lace flat. I like to kind of scrunch it somewhat and um, that just adds so much texture. And I don't generally do much to the back. Sometimes I'll decorate the back, but usually I just do some script stamping or something like that on it just to get it by. But with this one, I decided to add a rose also. And then this one will get um, some buttons. And I think I even do a shabby rose on this one. And now I've tied the knot in the end of some, just a little short piece of ribbon because this just needs to be a small shabby uh, rose. And I'm just twisting and gluing around that knot and that will make my little shabby rose. And I think with this one, I just keep the twisting in the same direction because it doesn't need to add much texture to it with this lace. It already has a lot of texture. So now I just add a couple of buttons and then um, I add just a little bit of lace to soften the, the sharp words there. I felt like that was too sharp against the other. So I just took a small piece of lace and just kind of scrunched it over the top of that. And then I glue a button in the center of that and punch a hole in it and thread some lace ribbon through it. And then this one was finished. And again, I think it adds so much to this little picture and the rose in the tag matches the rose in the center of the, um, picture. Now this is a birdhouse that my sister brought. She had painted it years ago, but it's faded a lot and she wanted me to paint over it. My first plan was to save as much of her painting as I could because she did such a good job on it and I tried to work around that but end up having to paint over most all of it. So I'm, I'm using this sea glass on the top and, um, and then I'm going to do the, um, the color fluff 
on the body. And again, I try to avoid the, um, at least the bird and the brick and end up having to go over the bird altogether and I'm able to save some of the brick pattern. But I decided with the brick to soften it that I would dry brush some of this white over the top of it and make it look more like a German smear or more like an older brick. So again, I was able to save most of the brick, uh, but I couldn't couldn't get the look around the bird that I wanted, so I end up just painting over that all together. But I want to use some of this napkin that my friend Myra sent. I've used it on another project, but I just love the soft colors in this, and these are going to go really well with the colors in my vignette today. So I'm just tearing some of those images out and, um, and mod podging those on the birdhouse. Now you could Mod Podge this napkin solid on here, uh, but I like to randomly place it myself. I feel like it adds a lot of character. I mean, you can take a napkin um, and put it on something and most of the napkins are really pretty that way. Uh, but then you haven't done much in the way of creating. You're just kind of putting what they already have on there. So I just like to create my own uh, design with it and then you're still using that beautiful art but it's not like everybody else's and when I tear these images out I don't tear them out perfectly at all because um, I kind of like the blue behind it here and there and um, I just want to um, get some of that color on there and some of the images but again I, I'm not perfect the way I cut them out now or tear them out with these birds obviously I want to get the whole bird torn out I don't want to tear into the bird and I try not to tear into some of the flowers but um but this definitely doesn't in any way have to be perfect So I make sure to add these to all sides because especially with the birdhouse you're going to see all sides so I don't want to leave those back sides plain. And I just love these colors. I think they're very soothing colors. Uh, my friend Betty Lou was in the shop today and we were talking about this sea glass. I think it's just such a soothing color. And although I'm more of a neutral person, in the spring I like just a little bit of color and these are just, um, they're colorful but not uh, not anything too bold. So once I get this finished, uh, I'm going to add some script stamping on it here and there and then uh, give it some heavy distress with some sandpaper. And then uh, I will clear coat everything to make it uh, durable for outside and uh and then this will be finished and then i'll be making a hang tag to go with this one also now i don't have any hang tags from viewers to show at the end of this video so uh, hopefully i'll have some more before the next one um but um if you haven't made one and would like to make one i have been watching my mail for those hang tags and then obviously i'm going to make uh this one in the same style and I want to use some more of that beautiful napkin on this one and some of that pretty vintage uh, scrapbooking paper. And then again I'm just going to layer some lace on this and some buttons and keep this one pretty simple. And I think this really freshened up this birdhouse. And um, although I hate that I had to paint over my sister's painting, I'm still really happy with how this turned out. And I think she's like me. I don't think she does much painting anymore. I used to do some painting myself, and um, 
Once I discovered decoupage, it's just so much easier and quicker, and I just don't have that kind of time to paint anymore. And I'm really loving this green and blue together. I think that it's a really pretty combination. And then you add that little pop of black, and, um, and I just really love how these colors came together. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.